When a person writes the story of his or her own life, that's what we call an autobiography. Maya Angelou wrote, I know why the caged bird sings. Nelson Mandela wrote, Long Walk to Freedom. There are two books that are talking about the lives of the writers and also give us indications about the historical events happening at that time. Let's go for a long passage talking about an autobiography. A new video of reading comprehension skills. This is video 91 in which we are back to the long passages. Before we move on, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That's our passage and it consists of seven paragraphs. Always we start by reading the introductory part which gives us an indication about what we are going to read about. The following passage is adapted from an African-American journalist's autobiography published in 1996. Here the author recalls his childhood during the early 1960s in New York City. What can you understand from these lines? That's an African-American uh, person, so maybe he would talk about segregation and racism. He was a child in 1960s. So it was at the time when there was still some sort of segregation and racism. He published this in 1996, which is 36 years after he was a child. He's recalling, he's remembering his childhood during that time of 1960s. Where did he live at that time? In New York City. Let's start by reading the first paragraph. The old black and white TV set worked, sometimes. It was not high on mommy's list of things to fix. She called it the boo tube and rarely allowed us to watch it. We did not need to. So what does this talk about? It talks about the black and white TV set, which worked sometimes, so it was not okay all the time. And it was not high on mommy's list of things to fix. She did not consider it very important to fix it. And she called it the boob tube. Actually, she did not allow the kids to watch it a lot. She rarely allowed them to watch it. And we did not need to. So the kids did not bother um, um, asking their mother to fix it because they didn't need it. They didn't need to watch TV. The second paragraph, our house was a combination three ring circus and zoo, complete with ongoing action, daring feats, music and animals. Over the years, we assembled a stable of pits that resembled a veritable petting zoo. Gerbils, mice, dogs, cats, rabbits, fish, birds, turtles and frogs that would alternately lick and bite us and spread mysterious diseases that zipped throughout our house. Mommy once bought home a chick uh, for Easter and it grew and grew until she came home from work one night, opened the door and saw eight kids chasing a rooster around the living room. Get him out, she screamed. What is this paragraph about? Actually, it's about the life uh, of the family at that time and the life of the kids. How many kids were in the house? There were eight. And what did they do? Why uh, they didn't need to watch TV? Because actually, they their life was full of entertainment, was full of excitement and activity. So their house was a combination of three ring circs and zoo. Was it really uh, the description of the house or was it just um, a metaphor of what they lived in? Actually, they had ongoing action and daring feats. They were daring. They had a lot of things that other kids didn't do, music and animals. So it was a combination of music and animals. And then the paragraph mentions all the animals that they had at home. And um, there was a nice incident when uh, their mother brought a chick for Easter 
and it grew and grew until she came home from work one night, opened the door, and she found her kids chasing the rooster, and she screamed and said, get him out. Then the third paragraph, we never consulted mommy about minor problems. Her time merited only full-blown problems life. Is the kitchen floor still under two feet of water since you all flooded it? And school, which was a top priority. Excuses for not doing homework were not accepted. So this to show the importance of education uh, for the mom. Cursing was not allowed. Saying bad words was not allowed. We were not even allowed to say the word lie. We had to use story. Do your homework and don't tell stories. And you might become uh, like your brother Dennis. Mommy admonished. Just look at how he's good doing. Educate your mind like your brother Dennis. It seems that there is an older brother. Uh, his name is Dennis, and the mother is always looking at him as the example for his uh, siblings. Dennis. Dennis here in line 26 is a paragraph by itself, is a separate paragraph. How did we know? Because it has this indent. And um, the next line also has an indent, so it means that the next line is a beginning of a new paragraph. You could hear the sighs all through the house when she mentioned the name. Which name? Dennis. They sounded like the whistle on the Long Island Railroad that passed by on the tracks a few blocks from our house. So here, this is um, how Dennis is looked um, at, uh, at their house. Um, everybody is giving a sigh all through the house. When she, she here means the mom, mentioned the name. They sounded like the whistle on the Long Island Rail. They here refers to the size. Then the last two paragraphs also are talking about Dennis. Dennis was the oldest uh, sibling and a family pioneer. He was an artist who drew pictures that told incredible stories about the places he had been and the people he had met. He had money in his pocket, actual dollars and cents with a change to spare. He was a giant among us, casting a huge oblong shadow that hung over us children like the Lincoln Memorial, which he had visited twice. His great achievements spoken of in his um, absence because he came home only for holidays were glowingly recounted, dissected, rumored, enhanced, extolled. The heights he attained, heights we pony mortals could only dream of achieving, were trumpeted and crowded about by mommy in every corner of the house. Dennis had finished college, Dennis had gone to Europe, and now for his crowning achievement, Dennis, oh glorious Dennis, oh mighty Dennis, 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 sowed the highest, most wonderful, most incredible achievement any human being, my, any son could hope to achieve. Dennis was going to be a doctor. So this is how is Dennis regarded at the house. He's an artist. He has money, which is not something available for the younger siblings. He also visited many places like the Lincoln Memorial. He also visited Europe. And now the biggest achievement that he's going to be a doctor. The last paragraph. Well, there was no greater honor. I mean, forget it. Doctor, teacher, take your pick. Had mommy known what Dennis was really doing at school, other than being a straight A student, she might have had a different opinion of him. Dennis was one of the most active civil rights students the University of Pennsylvania Medical School had ever seen. He marched on Washington. He organized a hospital workers' union. He sat at segregated lunch counters in the South. 
he had encounters with the police, Dennis was at war with the system, but as long as he kept his war out of the house and stayed in medical school, that was okay with mommy. So this is another part of Dennis' character that maybe was not clear at that time when the author was a child, but then when the author got older, he knew about his brother's activity at the university. He was one of the civil rights activists in the uh, University of Pennsylvania. The first paragraph is talking about the TV set, which was not a priority for the mother to fix. The second paragraph is talking about the activity in the house, which did not make the TV set as a priority even for the kids. The third paragraph talked about school and education for the mother as the biggest priority, and every one of the kids had to work hard to become like Dennis. Dennis is uh, the eldest sibling and the family pioneer. And Dennis was regarded as um, shown through the last two paragraphs as a person who's really regarded by the mother and by the kids. The last paragraph specifically is talking about the other part of Dennis' character when he um, acts as a civil rights student at the University of Pennsylvania. This is something that maybe the mother didn't know about and the kids didn't know about when they were kids, but later on they knew about. Now for the questions. For the first paragraph, the word high in line two, what does it mean? important, serious, strong, or exalted. It says it was not high on mommy's list of things to fix. What does the word or the pronoun it refer to? It refers to the TV set. So the TV set was not high on mommy's list of things to fix. Which choice should we go for? From the first and the second paragraph, we can tell that the TV set was not important to fix. So the answer would be A. The second question, the author's reference to the three ring circs and zoo, line five, suggests that. Okay, if we talk about the second paragraph, what was the main idea of the second paragraph? It was all about the activities that the kids had, and this is why they didn't need the TV set to be fixed. So the choices, family's home was not located in a residential neighborhood, family's home was full of stimulation and entertainment, children invented imaginary companions, children aspired to be animal trainers. So, as we said, is it a description of real zoo and circus or an image of, of a metaphor? Actually, this is an image of a metaphor that the house was like a zoo, that the house was like a circus. The answer for this question would be B. Family's home was full of stimulation and entertainment, was full of activities. One more question about the second paragraph. The incident with the rooster in lines 11 to 15 conveys which of the following? The mother's frustration with the children's pranks, the family's nostalgic feelings for ruler fa life, the children's difficulty working together, or a righteous moment in the family's home. Actually, it was just one incident that the writer mentioned here in order to show how active, how full of movement their house was. So, which choice should we go for? The answer would be D, a righteous moment in the family's home. It was just one incident mentioned by the author in order to give an example of how the kids were moving all around and they were not as scared of animals. Then a vocabulary question of the third paragraph. The word allowed in line 21, what does it mean? Is it per method? Is it assigned? Is it acknowledged or is it considered? Actually, uh, the sentence says excuses for not doing homework were not accepted and cursing was not allowed. The word allowed as well is used in the first paragraph when it says rarely allowed us to watch. So 
what is the choice that we should go for? So if you go for the meanings of the word allowed in paragraph one and even in paragraph three, the mother did not allow the kids to watch uh, the TV a lot and she did not allow them to say cursing words, which means that she did not give the, them permission to do this, which gives us the meaning of A as the answer. The next question is about the word Dennis which is forming a fourth paragraph by itself. So the author uses a single word as an entire paragraph in line 26, primarily two, which is line 26, the word Dennis. And if you look at the previous lines, do your homework um, to become like your brother Dennis. Then the mother says, educate your mind like your brother Dennis. Then the word Dennis as a separate paragraph. And then the next paragraph, it says, you could hear the sighs all through the house when she mentioned the name. What does this mean? Actually, uh, look at the choices. Draw attention to the evocative power the name had for the author. Demonstrate the author's difficulty in talking about his brother. Present a concise interpretation of a memorable event. Emphasize the mother's limited expectations for her children. Which choice should we go for? If you look at the choices here, draw attention to the evocative power the name had for the author. Actually, this is a choice that we should go for as a priority. But then we'll go for the rest of the choices. B, demonstrate the author's difficulty in talking about his brother. In the previous lines, uh, in paragraph three, it was not the author who was talking about Dennis, it was the mother. C, present a concise interpretation of a memorable event. The word Dennis is not an event, it's the name of the brother. D, emphasize the mother's limited expectations for her children. Actually, no, the mother had high expectations for her children and she always encouraged them to be like Dennis. So the answer would be A. Then we'll move to the last two paragraphs. In paragraph six, um, how does the reference to a shadow in line uh, 36 contribute to the portrait of Dennis? The whole of this paragraph is talking about Dennis as the eldest sibling and the family pioneer. And it talks about him as something that all the siblings uh, looked up at. So it suggests a sinister aspect of his personality. Actually, we did not see anything sinister about his personality, and the word sinister means evil. It indicates the dismay the younger siblings felt in his presence. No, the dismay means um, depression or um, frustration, but actually uh, he was not present all the time at the house. This is number one. Number two, they all looked at him as a role model, so it was not a dismay. C, it conveys the O which, uh, with which the family viewed him. Everybody in the family admired him, starting from the mother till all the siblings. It emphasizes his absolute control over the family. Actually, he was not present all the time. That's why he was not controlling the family. Yes, the answer would be C. Everybody admired Dennis in the family, starting from the mother till all the siblings, including the author himself. The answer would be C. Again, one question about paragraph six. The author uses the name Dennis repeatedly in lines 45 and 46 primarily to convey the intensity with which the siblings missed their brother Mother's insistence that the children follow the same path. Children's excitement over their brother's career choice. Mother's exaggerated regard for her son. And these are the four choices that we have. So let's discuss them and check the lines that talk about this question. If we go back to lines 45 and 46, who is talking at these lines? For his 
crowning achievement, Dennis, all oh, glorious Dennis, almighty oh, Dennis, 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 sowed the highest, most wonderful, most incredible achievement any human being, any son, could hope to achieve. Dennis was going to be a doctor. So who was talking in these lines? Actually, it was the mother. And the word son is the evidence for this. So the answer for this question would be D, mother's exaggerated regard or respect for her son. Then we have one question about the last paragraph. In line 59, the system refers to educational opportunities, major labor movement, certain efforts at political reform, the power structure at the time. So what do you think the answer should be? Actually, uh, if you remember when we talked about the introductory lines, we talked about uh, the author as an African-American writer, which means uh, that he would talk about segregation and he would talk about the obstacles that uh, he or his family would face at that time with um, the governing system. So the word system here, is it about educational opportunities? Let's read the lines. He sat at uh, segregated lunch counters in the South. He had encounters with the police. Dennis was at war with the system. So he was at war with the system. Why? Because the system for him was not fair, was segregating people who are African-American from the white Americans. So the system here was like the governing power. Which choice should we go for? Yes, the answer would be D, the power structure at that time, which means that the ruling or the governing body that was giving uh, orders of segregation um, against African-American people. The last question is about the uh, conclusion of this passage. The statement that Dennis kept his war out of the house in lines 59 to 60 most directly means that he protected his family from dangers outside the house, minimized his academic struggles when he was with his family, refused to participate in the family's political discussions or refrained from involving his family in his social activism. So let's go back to the lines and read. He had encounters with the police. Dennis was at war with the system, but as long as he kept his war out of the house, he stayed and stayed in a medical school that was okay with mommy. So maybe the mother knew about his activism, but as long as uh, the family was not involved in this, it was for her okay. One more condition that he would stay in the medical school. So do whatever, but stay in the medical school. The answer would be D, refrained from involving his family in his social activism. He avoided involving his family in the activities he is doing against the system. And the answer is D. Get the main idea for each paragraph and relate it to the main idea of the whole passage. That's how we can get the answers for the questions of the long passage. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Best of luck.